Dear security guards of Reddit, what was the most effed up thing you've ever seen while on your shift, not safe for work? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Saw a guy shitting into a bucket all the way at the bottom of our parking garage. When I told him he had to leave, he tripped on his bucket and his ass had what I assume was blood all over it. It was horrible. He then picked up the bucket and put it in his van unsecured, so I'm almost positive it later spilled in his van. I asked if he was okay, and he said yes, and just left. In public housing, there are a fair number of dead bodies that go unnoticed until they start to smell. In motels, there are a lot of domestic violence calls. One of the couples, usually the aggressor, will attack security. Lots of prostitutes and drug sales. This is universal in all types of motels. Motel 6 to the three-star place. We aren't cops, so there's little we can do other than call the cops. Another thing, we encounter way more out-of-the-place poop than we should. Worked at a building that had an attached thrift store and saw a fire truck roll up to the entrance on camera. Ran over to figure out what was going on. I had no calls or alarms going off. Turns out a morbidly obese customer had fallen off the toilet and gotten stuck between the toilet and the wall and managed to call 911. The part I'd actually consider effed up was one of the firefighters pulled me aside after and said, we took a blanket off the rack to cover them up, but you're not going to want it back. I'm not a security guard, but I've witnessed security guards handling it several times. I used to work at a casino, and there would be addicts who would not step away from a slot machine for anything. That includes using the bathroom. One time a lady had shit herself, sat in it, and continued to play. Security had to saran wrap her so nothing would leak out and send her home. I had a temporary job working overnight security for a hotel. The three months I had been doing it were mostly uneventful, but the lack of sunlight was getting to me. I'd start at 11 p.m., do some rounds, wait for the bar to empty out, find an empty smoking room and get high, watch late night TV, raid the kitchen for pastries, then watch the sun come up on the roof and go home at 7 a.m. Nice. It was literally my last shift before I started a new job. Everything was going smoothly until 6.30 a.m. The front desk calls me on my radio and says there is a noise complaint from one of the occupied rooms. The clock radio had been going off for 20 minutes. To add it to the front desk tells me the room requested a wake-up call 30 minutes before and hadn't answered multiple attempts to call. I head up to the room and a maintenance guy joins me just in case. I get to the door and sure enough the clock alarm is blaring full volume. I can hear the phone in the room ringing too. The big heavy older type phone with an actual effing bell in it. I knock on the door and shout over the noise, no answer. I pound on the door, no answer. I dip my keycard and start to open the door, but the upper latch is still connected. I pause. I guess I had unconsciously assumed that the room was empty given the volume of noise in the room, but the security latch can only be closed by someone in the room. My mind raced, but there was only one logical conclusion to draw from the evidence. I used the card to pop the security latch and open the door. Laying face down on the bed, Half covered by a bedsheet is a middle-aged man with a hairy back. I look at the maintenance guy who gives me the look that says, The F you want me to do? I enter the room and say, Excuse me, sir, in the most authoritative voice I can muster, loud enough to be heard over the alarm and the phone. No response. I get next to the bed, and louder this time, Excuse me, sir. No response. I reach my hand out and grab the dude's hairy shoulder and shake it. Excuse me, sir. Guy lifts his head up looks at me confused and just goes, oh, sorry. Watched a pimp strip his girl down naked at gunpoint, immediately called the police, and then proceeded to walk her down to the river at gunpoint. Luckily, police arrived in time, and she still wouldn't press any charges. Just awful and sad situation. I worked as a concierge at a high-rise condo, but part of my duty was watching the cameras and making sure the condo was secure. Anyways, one day I get back from my break and there was a ton of cops in the courtyard because someone had been shot and killed there. They asked me to help them review the cameras, so I did. It was an old man who lived in the building and committed suicide. I saw him put the gun to his head, pull the trigger, and collapse. I won't forget that image ever. It was really heartbreaking. His wife had died unexpectedly and he decided there was no point on continuing to live. Worked security at a concert venue. We had a dude just out of his mind on some kind of wild shit and had to pull him out and put him on the ground and zip cuff him. He put his face to the ground and got a mouthful of rocks and started chewing. Could hear all his teeth breaking and falling out of his mouth with so much blood. And he was just smiling like the Joker, effing moderate your drug use. 
Finally, something I can answer. It's not really effed up, but a few months ago, I was roving the outside of the building at night. We work at the foot of the Rocky Mountains, so I've seen my fair share of deer, fox, coyotes, etc. I was finishing up my 3 a.m. check when I walked around the corner and met eyes with a fully grown mountain lion. He was about 10 feet away. Now, I know that you're supposed to remain calm, don't bend down, etc. All that training went out the window. I booked it around the corner and tried to get inside as quickly as possible. The mountain lion gave chase for a brief minute, then broke off and ran into the brush once it saw my reflective vest. I had my gun out and was never so scared in my life. It made for some pretty funny camera footage, though. I was working as a bouncer as a favor for a friend with a company on New Year's Eve. It was in an old movie theater converted to a nightclub, so it had those balconies that peeked out over the bottom section, which was now the dance floor. I saw a whole bunch of people pointing up at the balcony directly above me. I look up and got a bottom view of this dude effing a girl doggy style bent over the balcony railing. The dude was huge, like 6'5", 300 plus pounds, and the girl was probably the same weight, but 5'5", five five, no offense. The view from the bottom was horrific, to say the least. I'm not the security guard in this situation, but I was in the building when it happened. My partner was working at a hostel that houses medical patients from fly-in only communities while they and their families receive various medical treatments. A large portion of the guests are pregnant. Well, this one teenage girl had been missing most of the afternoon and her family were becoming concerned. I had brought my partner lunch to work and was sitting in the lobby with him when a security guard who was searching the grounds for her found her. She had hanged herself in a supply closet after drowning her newborn, as in she just gave birth in the closet in a mop pail. I've been in healthcare security for just over a decade. I'm in the technical side of it now, but spent about five years as a uniformed officer. Man, I have so many stories. We work directly with mental health patients, ranging from drugs in the ER to full-blown psych unit patients, workplace violence situations, domestic assault between patients and their families, assault, theft, and robbery, and so, so, so many other things. The biggest one that stands out to me as the most effed up, hmm, that's tough. So, one night we got a report of the sound of broken glass in the parking deck. Me and a coworker go out on foot to investigate as our mobile unit was off campus. Sure enough, we hear it. Turns out, it's someone trying to steal a car. If I recall correctly, he broke into several before finding one he was able to hotwire. We catch him in the act. Cue the Scooby-Doo scene of running around, chasing him, trying to corner him until PD arrives. We get him on the third level. Mobile unit, who had finally come back, is coming down the deck. Coworker is going up, and I come out of the stairwell at the center, directly across from him. I start calling for him to give up. He's caught. PD will be there any moment. It's over. What does dude do? He climbs over the edge and tries to drop down and catch himself on the next level down. This middle-aged, overweight dude. Nope. He falls straight down three stories, lands on his feet. The sound was nauseating. We rushed down, got an ambulance en route. Dude lived, but would likely never walk again. Got a look at his x-rays in the ER while getting information together for my report and talking with PD, who eventually showed up after the bus took him around to our ER. I choose that story because he wasn't a patient to begin with. There are many, many, many things I've seen in my years in that hospital. I worked as a mall security for a bit years ago. One of the other guys, I heard a lady scream but didn't see anything, so he took note of the time and area. So, we had this mentally handicapped kid that got out of his group home and ran around the mall for a couple of hours that same day before the cops finally got notified and caught him, screaming about Jesus while sprinting around the food court. Back to the scream. We looked at the cameras later to see if we could find out what had happened. This kid walked right up to this younger woman and cupped his hand between her legs for a second and then walked off like nothing happened. She had pretty clearly screamed there, stood there for a second afterwards, then started laughing as she walked off. I mean, what else do you do when somebody obviously mentally handicapped kid grabs a handful of genitals and then walks off, I guess? I got a second job as a night security for a local hospital my wife worked at. When I got home from the first night, she jokingly asked, how was my first night, Paul Blart? Well, I had to help with a woman coding out from a park bench outside from a heroin OD, remove and catalog another woman's jewelry from her death in the ER from a car crash. Then I had to break up a domestic dispute in the birthing unit, check a few bodies out from the morgue to the coroner, 
She asked that I take a shower before I went to bed and never made fun of me again. I worked security at a hospital for two years. One afternoon, we had a code gray to remove an unruly guest from the property. He was basically about to start punching doctors in the ER according to dispatch, but right when I got there, two police were coming through the front door and the guy bolted. He practically threw an elderly nurse to the floor on his way down the hall, but I knew there was a T intersection he had to go through if he wanted to get to the fire exit door. I'm 280 pounds, semi-muscular, six foot one, and I tackled that guy into the wall so hard, his head literally went through the drywall. It turned out he was a domestic abuse repeat offender, so it's too bad I couldn't help him find a wall stud. Anyway, I actually got a nice bonus and a little award plaque that year, so good year. <laughs> 